Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. Like I said before, whenever I introduced this video idea, this video is not gonna be directly Airstream related. It's us building this 12 by 17 shed we got off of Amazon, uh, but it does hold all our Airstream stuff and it's proven to be pretty useful with just not having to go up front to get everything out of the garage because the Airstream is right there. So in this video, we're pretty much gonna cover a step-by-step -step assembly on how we built the shed ourselves within what, like three days? It felt like forever. It did it feel like forever. The top review on the Amazon listing for the shed is someone complaining that there's not a YouTube video that anyone's put out about how to assemble this. So we kind of saw the opportunity like, hey, we're getting the shed anyway. We might as well film it. Um, so here we are. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the video. If you guys have any questions that we don't cover, feel free to let us know in the comments below. Um, but, yep. Okay, so for step five, uh, the mid gable braces, which is part 6381, you're gonna be mounting it like this so that you have just the smaller holes on the mounting part of this bracket and then facing the end of the truss, you're gonna have these larger holes towards the ends. So you're gonna mount it just like this for this side and again, just flip it, mirror it for the other side. Okay, for step seven, when it comes to part 6380, uh, which is the outer gable brace, the part that you're actually gonna be mounting to the frame itself, which is what Eric is doing right now, is this side because it's a little less wide than this side. So this is gonna be the part that goes on that frame, just like that on that side. And then for the other side, it's just gonna be mirrored. So it'll be just like that. So now for steps eight through 10, since we have both halves of the truss put together, we've just laid them on their side so you can see how they're really lining up. This part, 7738, is gonna be the only part that you need, and this is gonna be going on the bottom of each truss. So down here where you see these holes, you're gonna have six uh, bolts going in through the bottom of each side. This piece is going in the bottom, so that's what we're bolting together in order to hold each component next to each other to make one whole truss. see here um 
in this corner we have a bolt coming up in the far corner and the inner corner and this piece right here on this side specifies on it with some engraving that they had done and it points an arrow to which way the back is otherwise the holes aren't going to sit exactly where they need to be and it could throw the whole frame off what we did is took a piece of focus 7857 and sent bolts up through the bottom and as you can see right here you have one side that's supposed to go in through the inside holes and another side that goes in through also like it's like the same thing like the farthest holes to the left so that is what we did <laughs> Putting these walls in, make sure you have the side with the three close holes on the side towards where the garage door is going to be, and the two more spaced out holes to the side of the shed. Here on step eight, here you have this rear frame assembly that it's pretty vague about right here it just means you're doing the exact same thing you did for the floor frame for the rear it's part 11770 and 8321 it's the exact same thing you're gonna assemble it the exact same way you did the one for the floor and that's gonna be what is like the mid frame brace for the whole back wall but the only thing is it's reversed. So now you have 8321 on the right side and 11770 on the left. When here, it was the opposite way. So for the back wall, these are going to be the last two pieces you do is 11768 and 7825. You're just going to do all the panels until you're left with like a small amount of space and then you're going to put the bigger one in first and then the smaller one to overlap and that's going to cover two pieces of paneling that both have like crimps on the edges so it's just kind of like a an appearance piece just to make the whole side look good. but. I'm gonna show you guys now what the back wall looks like and then we're gonna get started on doing this wall. So, as you can see, the bottoms of some of the panels look a little, this is a family friendly channel, uh, effed. So, I mean, what you could do is I guess pull the screws back out and then try and flatten it out, but that's just how the, the holes lined up for us. We don't have any pieces backwards or anything as far as we can tell, so that's just how the holes lined up and what it caused. So maybe you'll get lucky and have better spaced holes if you happen to order the shed kit, or maybe they'll be worse, who knows? Uh, it doesn't really seem like quality control is a big thing for the manufacturers of this, so what you get is what you get.
sweat needs to go to the top. Slotted holes at the top. Just use screws and hook the pieces together. Just overlap them and screw them in. And then a bolt goes through there and then through all three pieces. Another bolt up front and center. And then same thing down and around this side. so this is the end this is the final product with all of our stuff in it uh we've had it for about a month now i'd say we're pretty happy with it overall it serves its purpose uh pretty well so again if you're not intending to put a car in this then the way we did the whole foundation thing is fine but if you are like the subtitle said Please, use yeah, use concrete, figure out another way to, like, build your floor, uh, because this wood is not gonna cut it, uh, it warps whenever we just walk on it, so.
Also, the only upgrades or like things that we've done to make this thing better since then is we've added in some solar fans to the side just to like bring air in and get air out just to like keep some sort of circulation going in here. It gets uh, very hot. It does get very hot, uh, especially since we're in Florida. It just, it's like the Airstream. It's just a baked potato, really hot inside. He just used silicone around the edge of like the bottom perimeter of the shed. Whenever it rained, we were getting some leakage coming in underneath like the-, the walls. Yeah, underneath the walls. And it was puddling up on our wood and we painted it, it's fine, uh, but we didn't want it to keep happening. So we just did that and it's resolved the problem. But other than that, I mean, we've kind of just done pretty standard stuff, hung a light that runs off of uh, an extension cord from the house and that's pretty much it. So thank you so much for watching. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below and we will see you again next when? Thursday at three. Bye.